And if you have those that interest, please contact me and so that we can work something out. Uh, for the 10 o'clock service on Christmas Eve, we are in need of an usher. So if anybody is planning on coming to that service and has not signed up yet and is one of our ushers, uh, please let us know. All right. That all being said, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Peace 
from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, as we continue to prepare for the second coming of your Son, create in us a Transform us so that we may reflect the light of your Son, and become creatures of goodness, kindness, and compassion, generosity, honesty, patience, and peace. For the sake of the one who made you a real person, like the wall of our world. Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, place your words upon my lips and in my heart, that I may proclaim your truth. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we have heard the story of the Annunciation. This is when the angel Gabriel visited Mary and informed her that she would conceive a child. 
God through the Holy Spirit and become the bearer of the Son of God. Most of us would probably find the presence of the heavenly being enough to strike terror in our hearts. But here in Luke, it specifies that after Gabriel greets Mary with pretty lofty words, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary was very perplexed by Gabriel's words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. We don't know all the reasons that Mary may have been perplexed, but the moment we stop to think about it, we realize the possibilities are endless. From her circumstances to her socioeconomic level, and from her gender and age to her life experience to that point. There are so many reasons to doubt the sincerity of the angel's greeting and perhaps not to understand it at all. And perhaps the one possibility that doesn't even occur to Mary until Gabriel continues is that he is serious. She is favored by God, and God is with her. Mary is not the only one who struggles to believe that she is favored and that God is with her. Particularly after the year that we have had, many people would scoff in disbelief or shake their heads in doubt, perplexed by this greeting, were it being brought to us. In our disbelief, we need to remember that at the heart of the Christmas carols and the celebrations and prayers and the readings of Christmas Day, is exactly the promise that God comes to us in love to tell us that we are loved and to send us out to love others, always equipped by the life-giving power of God's love. We are, in fact, both favored and accompanied by God, always. In some ways, this will be the most dismal Christmas any of us can remember. Economic hardship, political strife, attempts to undermine the very foundation of our democracy, a new and sharper awareness of long-standing racial injustice, the promise of a vaccine, even as hospitalizations and deaths surge to new and devastating highs. The list goes on, and all of it contributes to having a difficult time believing the announcement of the angel and the promise of Christmas. But even if we were not facing any of the challenge, challenges of this particular season of our lives, it is peculiarly and painfully difficult for us to believe that God favors us and is with us. And the results of that difficulty are as common as they are tragic. Think of a person 
who has spent most of their adult life confusing sex with intimacy and who lives in the quiet fear that voicing any need, hope, or desire to their partner risks disappointment or desertion. Or the middle-aged executive who is the picture of success in every possible way except for the addiction they are too ashamed to admit or address. Or the gay teen who has confessed to thinking about suicide nearly every day for years because they have never felt accepted for who they are. Or the African American parent who simultaneously welcomes and doubts promises of police reform after they have been pulled over too many times and asked a question that I or probably none of us have ever been asked, is this your car? And so will teach their children how to behave when pulled over by the police. A lesson it never even occurred to me to offer to my own children. Different scenarios, different levels of opportunity, challenge, and privilege, for sure. Yet the same struggle to believe that we are favored, that we have value and dignity simply for who we are. And that God is with us and for us. So much in life suggests that this isn't true, can't be true, will never be true. And that perplexity and doubt colors our view of ourselves and those around us. Countless interpreters over the centuries have commented with admiration on Mary's quiet and profound faith expressed so simply in her words, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And there is good reason for that admiration. But maybe, just maybe, Gabriel's initially perplexing but ultimately life-giving promise, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you, made possible Mary's profound statement of faith. <clears throat> if we also could imagine those words addressed to us, greetings, favored ones, the Lord is with you, how might our lives be different? Today, we are offered those words of promise. As we reflect on and wonder about this promise to us, let us also recall an additional promise made to Mary and to us. Nothing is impossible for God. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
He suffered and much was crucified, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I agree with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our last time. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Gracious God, in this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faith. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God. Righteous God, you humble, the powerful, and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of the people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is very. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things to eat. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God. And your mercy is there. God of compassion, we confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those affected by racism in our community and worldwide. Hear us, O oh God. Hear mercy and spirit. Loving Father, bring relief to all those who need healing, hope or restoration, especially thinking of those on our prayer list and those we now name in your presence. In your infinite love, you tenderly care for us and nurse us back to health. Hear us, O oh God. Hear mercy and prayer. We give thanks for the saints who have prepared our way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Especially Virgil Fackler, Ruth Gittelsberger, Kenneth Ingram, Clyde McFadden, Gail Schlindhorn, Betty Shannon, Carl Simons, Robert K. Spouse, Sprouse, and Joseph Pinto Sr. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for peace in the world and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those of congregational ties. Hear us, O oh Lord. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Shalom.
Let us pray. Lord of Advent, set the God of the great this day, the work of our hands, the gifts of our labor, our lives to serve you. Gladden our hearts as we watch the coming of and help us to share that gladness with all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness, and so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O now in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Thank you. 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone who has done it. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and God will bear in his name. If he follows the promises and leads his people forth in joy, but shall have us in hearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice in this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless our Advent waiting, fill us with love, and guide our journey now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.